Glucagon-like peptide 1, better known as GLP-1, continues to be very popular, but what if you don't want to use a medication? What if you want to raise your GLP-1 levels with either food or supplements? That's what we're going to talk about today, including the popular things that don't work. So let's begin our discussion by talking about probiotics, specifically a type called Lactobacillus ruteri SD5865, which was shown to increase GLP-1 by 43% in healthy men and women, and this boosting of the hormone only took four weeks to take effect. Additionally, this study also showed that GLP-2 also increased by almost 80%. Now, this is not the only probiotic that has been shown to elevate glucagon-like peptide. Here are the other probiotic supplements that have also been shown to work as well. Take a screenshot if you like, or stop the video and take a closer look at them. Something else you might want to add to your diet includes eating more fiber, such as that in oats, barley, lentils, berries, and others, which have been shown in various animal and human studies to also raise GLP-1. Now, while both soluble fiber and insoluble fiber are both thought to work in similar ways. These fibers that you're looking at here, including inulin, fructo, oligosaccharides, guar gum, and beta-glucan from barley, seem to be the types of fibers that have been highlighted in the research so far. And also notice I'm highlighting beta-glucans from barley. Beta-glucan is also found in oatmeal. And while oatmeal continues to be a very healthy food, oatmeal beta-glucans have not yet been demonstrated to raise GLP-1. And I know what you're thinking, what about psyllium, which is a very popular fiber supplement? It has been investigated, but so far does not appear to raise GLP-1. As a matter of fact, there is some evidence that psyllium fiber may actually lower GLP-1 levels. However, all hope is not lost. On the plus side, psyllium fiber has been shown in other clinical trials to lower both insulin and blood sugar. Another type of fiber that you might want to consider taking a look at is glucomannan. Glucomannan is also known by another name called konjac root extract. In this study where 22 healthy adults were given 2.5 grams of glucomannan mixed in a strawberry flavored drink, not only did their gastric emptying slow down and their satiety improved, but their GLP-1 levels also rose significantly as well. And I'll link below to my video on glucomannan and weight loss so you can see the weight loss research and what happened for yourself. Now, we can't talk about fiber without mentioning digestion, resistant starches. These are types of fibers that we can't break down. So in other words, they're resistant to digestion. Now, while there are studies showing that digestion resistant starches can raise GLP-1, other studies, however, contradict this, showing no effect on GLP-1 levels. That said, the foods that contain digestion resistant starches are definitely healthy, so I wouldn't avoid them just because they may or may not affect GLP-1. And that brings us to whey protein, which some have said is one of the most potent ways to increase this satiety hormone. In this study you're looking at, which only involved eight overweight women, a protein shake containing 45 grams of whey protein isolate raised GLP-1 levels greater than a placebo did. And as an added bonus, those consuming the whey protein shake also showed reductions in hunger and greater satiety too. Now this next study is interesting because it involved 28 overweight men. They were given 25 grams of a whey protein shake. Whey protein in this study was shown to raise GLP-1 by up to four hours after they consumed the shake. However, what makes this study particularly interesting is when they added fructose to the whey protein shake. When they did this, GLP-1 levels declined. In other words, fructose may not be the best thing to be consuming if you're looking to maintain healthy GLP-1 levels, so definitely take a look at the ingredients in your protein shakes. Now on the flip side, two other low-calorie sweeteners that have been shown to raise levels of this hormone are D-allulose and erythritol. Now I know what you're thinking, what about casein, which is the main protein in milk? So it does appear that both whey and casein raise GLP-1 levels, however, whey protein may be a better way to go, and here's why. When GLP-1 is secreted, it's actually inactivated by an enzyme called dipeptidylpeptase 4, or DPP-4. Whey protein appears, at least in animals for now, to have a greater ability to inhibit the DPP-4 enzyme, thus leading to higher overall GLP-1 levels. And that's a mouthful, so translation, Whey protein seems to be better at inactivating the inactivator of GLP-1, 
which in turn leads to higher levels of this hormone. Now here's something that I think most people have probably not heard about, and that is green foods. Green foods like spinach and kale and broccoli and Brussels sprouts, they contain compounds called thalkaloids. And thalkaloids have been the subject of some very interesting weight loss research. When 38 overweight women were given just five grams of thalkaloids that were derived from baby spinach, not only did their GLP-1 increase, but also also, the women reported reduced urges to eat sweets. So based on this, as well as other studies, you might want to consider adding some spinach to your protein shakes. Moving right along, it seems that other studies have shown that different varieties of nuts can also increase GLP-1. In this study, a diet that was supplemented with just two ounces, or 57 grams, of pistachios increased glucagon-like peptides in healthy people. And as an added bonus, pistachios have also been shown to reduce fasting blood sugar and insulin resistance in people who have metabolic syndrome. So good news for pistachios, but what about almonds? So almonds are definitely a healthy food with a number of clinical trials on them. However, in one small investigation, almonds had no effect on GLP-1, although they were shown to lower blood sugar in those who had diabetes. Now, it may seem counterproductive, but fats have also been shown to raise GLP-1, and their effect may even be greater than whey protein. Now, drilling down a little further, it also appears that polyunsaturated fats, as well as monounsaturated fats, appear to be better boosters of GLP-1 than saturated fats. For example, when researchers gave people a meal that contained three ounces of olive oil, it stimulated GLP-1 better than a meal that contained three and a half ounces of butter. Another option worth taking a look at is pine nut oil. In this clinical trial, when overweight men and women were given just six grams of hydrolyzed Siberian pine nut oil, it enhanced GLP-1 levels after eating for four to six hours later, and it also reduced their appetite too. Now, what's interesting about this study is Olive oil was also shown to have the same effect. However, when you combined olive oil and the pine nut oil, there was not a synergistic effect. In other words, combining olive oil with pine nut oil did not raise GLP-1 levels higher than either oil by themselves. Now, switching gears, several studies have also hinted that green tea extract may also raise GLP-1. For example, we have this study where 39 people with type 2 diabetes, they were given 500 milligrams of green green tea extract for six weeks. This caused a significant rise in GLP-1 that was almost doubled. And as an added bonus, these people were also rewarded with reductions in insulin resistance too. Now, while that does sound encouraging, green tea extract would not be my go-to supplement for raising GLP-1. And that's because over the years there have been multiple cases of liver problems and elevated liver enzymes associated with the use of green tea supplements. Now, speaking of tea, you may have heard of some doctors online talking about the GLP-1 boosting benefits of Herbamate tea. In fact, I've even seen some influencers online calling Herbamate tea GLP-1 tea to further drive home this message. And this is the study that I have seen offered up as proof of the benefits of Herbamate tea. However, if you read the study, you can actually see that Herbamate tea decreased GLP-1. And I'll say that again, Herbamate tea actually lowered GLP-1 levels in humans. Now, that's one reason why I'm not a fan of Herbamate tea, but see my video below on the research that seems to have linked Herbamate tea consumption to various forms of cancer. And then we come to berberine, which literally has been called nature's ozempic online. And to be sure, there are some papers on berberine's ability to augment GLP-1. However, the vast majority of this proof involves either laboratory animals or isolated cells in a petri dish. That said, there is some research on berberine helping people lose weight. And for more on that, I'll link to my video on berberine weight loss so you can learn more. So there you have it. What do you think? Leave a comment below and until next time, take care out there.